Hey there, geographers, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time we talked about geographic data, and today we're going to be expanding that. We're going to be looking at how different geospatial and geographic data can be used by governments and businesses and individuals. We're going to be looking at the power of data and how it can be used on different scales to impact our own lives. Now, in order to understand exactly how geographic data impacts us and helps us and shapes us, we have to understand scale. Now, most students, when they hear scale, they think about a map. They're talking about the ratio of the distance of a space on a map compared to their surface. But scale is more than that. In human geography, we could look at a local, a national, a regional. We could talk about a global scale. Geographic data is used in all these different scales, and it's going to be important for us to understand how it's used in each of the different scales. Because as we change from our local scale to our global scale, we're going to have different conversations. On a local scale, we could look at governments, and they use data all the time. They're going to be using it to understand where should they build a new school, how should they set up school boundaries, where should utilities be going, where do we need a new stop sign compared to a stop light, or even just redistricting parts of the city. Businesses also use data to better understand how to market to their customers, just how to understand their customers. What are they thinking, feeling, how are they viewing their products, their store, or where to open a new store. All of this is using data on the local level. On a regional scale, governments use data all the time. For example, in the United States, the federal government uses data to better understand which states need more money in order to help with projects or to be able to help with road funding or to understand exactly how citizens are viewing political decisions in each region of the country. This allows them to gain more insight into what's working and what's not working. And it's all based off of data. Businesses are also going to look at data on the regional scale. They're going to be looking at why are some regions in a society doing better than others. They'll look at customer satisfaction reports or sales data reports, and they'll try to better understand exactly what's working in some parts of the society compared to others. We could also look at how other organizations use data on the regional scale to better understand where are the needs of the people within society. For example, religious institutions oftentimes look at a country and they'll look regionally to see where is there a lack of house of worships. And so what they'll do then is identify spaces that have a need. Then they'll switch the scale. They'll go to the local level to identify exactly where they should put the house of worship. If we change our scale to the national scale, we can see that data is again at the forefront of decision making. Governments, for example, have to determine how are they going to allocate all their resources they have for the year, all the money they have, their budgets. They're going to use census information to better understand the needs of their entire country. How are they going to spread out this wealth? Where is there going to be another military base? Or what interstate projects that go throughout multiple states are going to get funded? Businesses are going to be using data to better understand understand exactly where they should locate, where they should operate, where should manufacturing be, where are they going to put their warehouses, how is that going to work with shipping routes, where are shipping transportation hubs that are going to connect to different regions of the country. All these decisions businesses make in order to make sure that they can continue to scale up and they continue to be able to serve their customers. Now, I mentioned that governments use census data and to be fair, businesses use it, organizations do, religious institutions do. Everyone uses census data, and that's because the census is really important. This is an official count of a population. It happens once every 10 years, and it gives us a ton of different insights into demographic breakdowns of society. We can see gender, we can see age, we can see how many people are living in a household. It shows us a lot. And this is why it's used in almost every aspect of society. Now, we can also see data being used on a global scale, where we're looking at the entire world. And here you're going to be having supranational organizations, things like the UN. You're going to have countries analyzing different breakdowns, businesses looking at expanding into international markets. And one thing I hope you're starting to see about scale, and I mentioned at the start of this video, is this hierarchy. It's kind of this top down. If we're talking about a global scale, we're going to be using a lot of vague information. We're looking at large geographic spaces and we can't pinpoint specifics. And so think about it this way. If we're talking about a business and we're talking about the global scale, the CEO is going to be looking at the world, all the different areas that they operate. They're going to be collecting tons and tons of data. And what they're going to be doing is trying to make decisions on how to distribute across the world. If we shift down to the national, now they're going to be looking at all the different regions, all the different areas within a country. And if we shift all the way down to the local level, now we're having managers, we're having individual employees making decisions within their store, within their community, based on what's happening at that one location. They're no longer looking at the entire scope. 
So we can see as we narrow down to the local level, we're able to make a lot more specific connections. We can see exactly what's going on. So each scale shows us different insight into society and life. Woo, all right, done with another video. We've gone through three of these topic videos now, and hopefully you're finding some value in them. If you are finding some value, consider subscribing. It really supports the channel. It lets YouTube know I'm doing a good job, and it lets me know that I should keep making more videos. Also, you know the drill by now. You've seen the questions on the screen. Make sure you're going and practicing what we just learned. Check for my answers in the comment section of the YouTube video. And if you are struggling with your AP Human Geography class and you need a little bit more help, check out my ultimate review packet. There's a link to it in the description of this video. It's a great resource that I made to help you study for your class and that national exam. All right, thank you so much, geographers, for watching and for considering subscribing. I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you online.